Hi everyone, welcome. We are about to begin the next series of art classes in the Art in Isolation series that is hosted and sponsored by the Hoboken Public Library. My name is Liz and Doy. In July, we are going to launch into a series of classes about artist collaborations. I thought it might be fun in this period of time when many of us are sequestered at home alone to learn about artists who work together. I think this may inspire you to reach out to people that perhaps you haven't talked to in quite a long time because that may help to inspire you for the next series of art projects that we will begin. So for this class, I will begin, as I have in all our other classes, talking about the artists that we are going to look at in depth, talk about and show some of the work that they created in their lifetime or in their lives, if they're still living today, and then talk to you about the project that you can make in your own home. Tonight we are going to be creating a piece using media called Soft Pastels. You, however, will be able to use any materials that are available to you in your place of isolation. I'm going to start this series of classes talking about what is perhaps the most infamous collaboration that artists have ever done. And that is the collaboration between the late, great, very famous artist Andy Warhol and the also late, great, incredibly famous extraordinarily talented artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. They met each other both at the end of their lives. Basquiat was quite young still at that point, and Warhol had been ill and suffering from various physical problems for quite a while at the time he met Basquiat and was dealing with health issues. So they both met at different stages in their lives. Warhol was a little bored with the work that he was doing at that time, and Basquiat became an inspiration for him to start on a new pathway and to do things that for him were uncharted and unusual. Here is an image of Basquiat and Warhol in the early days of their friendship. Basquiat was in his early 20s when he met Warhol, and Basquiat is the young man on the left. Warhol is the gentleman with the white wig on the right, easily recognizable. At the time Basquiat met Warhol, he was flat out broke and literally living on the streets of the village and he was introduced, Basquiat was introduced to Warhol, and the friendship grew. They became quite close friends for a number of years. This is the kind of work that you probably think of when you think of Warhol. Warhol is most famous for taking commercial images and making them into art. So this is his famous Campbell Soup series. I believe there were 38 images of the Campbell Soup can. He did images of every type of soup that Campbell Soup made. At that time, they are silk screened images and when he first started creating this kind of work, the art world was taken aback and shocked. No one had ever thought to cross the line between commercial art and fine art, but Warhol was the man brave enough to do that first. 
Basquiat's paintings were incredibly different from Warhol's kind of work. Think back to those soup cans that I just showed you. They were very controlled, very clean images in Warhol's work. But when you look at Basquiat, there's an extraordinary freedom, a looseness of line, a kind of craziness in the jagged, spiky line work that he does, the unusual colors, the incredible image. Basquiat was heavily influenced by his African-American heritage and was always looking at pictures of African masks, he loved to collect masks. He often referred to African masks in his work. And he also was a street artist, so much of his work has a kind of graffiti quality to, to it. Done very quickly, very haphazardly, with a lot of energy in life. Warhol loved Basquiat's work. In fact, at one point, Warhol claimed or stated that Basquiat was way above his talent level and that Basquiat was the true genius. And then they decided to work together. And we're going to talk briefly about the images that they created in the short period in which they worked together. And then I'm going to teach you the lesson for this week's Art in Isolation. So you can see in this picture of the invitation that Basquiat and Warhol had together that you couldn't find two more different people, young and old, black and white. How could two such very, very different individuals be able to collaborate in their art? The fact is it worked. One day they were working in Warhol's studio together. They were working side by side on separate paintings. And then Basquiat all of a sudden went over to Warhol's painting and started drawing on it. And Warhol at first was furious, but then he realized that Basquiat had hit upon something quite wonderful. And they started painting on the same canvases together. I invite you, start looking for the collaborative pieces that Warhol and Basquiat did together. I guarantee you're going to be astounded by how beautiful they are. So here we have one of the paintings from their collaborative two-person show. And you can see the incredible influence that Basquiat must have had on Warhol. So they both created self-portraits. Basquiat, who drew incredibly well, did this very tongue-in-cheek, cartoon-like image of himself on the right, and Warhol's self-portrait is on the left, with lines by Basquiat over the top. And I'm sure that Warhol worked on the Basquiat side as well. And the influence of each artist on each other and then the blending of their two styles has created just this wonderful, I think very humorous and lively piece of art. Here's the final image of their collaboration that I'm going to show you. I really, really recommend that you go online and look for more of their work that they did together because you're going to love it. You're absolutely going to love it. I chose this painting in particular because it really demonstrates how they worked their process, how they worked together. The still life here, more to the left center of the painting, was Warhol's work. So this is an example of when Warhol 
was painting a large canvas and then Basquiat came along and just started doodling and painting and drawing all over Warhol's work. And as I mentioned before, Warhol initially was horrified by the kind of arrogance that Basquiat showed to touch Warhol's work and to, to change it in this incredibly strong way. But then Warhol went with it and loved it and embraced it and the two of them worked together to make these magnificent pieces. Collaboration between artists is something that I'm going to talk more about in the weeks to come. It's not unusual and when it happens I think it's just magical. I want you to think about relationships that you've had during your lifetime. And while you're thinking about that, they could be good relationships, they could be bad relationships, although I think you should think about a relationship you had with someone that you love that's really a fun, happy memory for this project. But while you're trying to dredge up those memories. I'm going to talk briefly about the color wheel and soft pastels, that is the media we're going to use tonight, and then I'm going to talk about the project that you can create in your own home. Those of you who know about the color wheel already, bear with me. It really is always a good thing to review color mixing. It's so helpful. Even those of you who are more experienced artists, a review can always spur you on to doing better and better work. So first of all, there are three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. And they're called primary because they cannot be mixed. You can only purchase them. By mixing two primary together, colors together, you can create secondary colors. So, for example, when you mix yellow with red, you create the secondary color orange. When you mix blue with red, you create the secondary color violet. And finally, when you mix the primary colors blue with yellow, you make the secondary color green. Another really important thing to know about the color wheel is that when you mix a primary color with its secondary opposite, you create what we call neutral earth tones. This is really important to remember. It seems counterintuitive and even a little bit scary when you first start mixing colors, but I'm going to show you tonight that it really works. If you mix the primary blue with its secondary opposite orange, it too will make brown tones and grayish colors. Mix primary yellow with its secondary opposite purple violet, it will create those more earthy colors. All right, as I mentioned before, we're going to use soft pastels tonight. Soft pastels are wonderful tools to draw with. And as the name implies, they're very soft. So the project that I am going to start making for you this evening is about my dolls. Because the most wonderful collaboration I had in my lifetime was the friendship between my sister and I. You probably can't see too much of this photograph, but it's one of my favorite childhood photos. I'm the younger, smaller child in front, clutching the doll, and my sister is behind me, hugging me. We had a wonderful time together when we were young, and we both shared this doll who is my personal muse. Her name is Hazel. She's probably close to 80 years old. 
and you can see that she was well loved. In fact, my sister and I fought over her. I wanted her so badly. So my sister worked a deal with me. For years she said, no, 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 no. And then one day she said to me, if you give me your other doll, I'll give you Hazel. So unbeknownst to me, she had created a deal where she was the winner because she got my more, I guess you might say, modern doll that you could feed and it actually wet itself. It was pretty cool. And I regretted the swap for a long time afterwards. But in my later years, as Hazel became a true object of comfort and love and affection for me, she began appearing in my paintings over and over again. And she really is my muse now. A lot of the artwork that I do comes from looking at her and holding her. So what I invite you to do, after you've thought about the collaboration with whatever person you want to choose in your life, it could be a relative, it could be a friend, it could be an enemy, think about how you related to each other and try and create an image about that experience. Hazel also has a friend I like to think of him as her special friend. And I'm going to do a portrait of these two dolls together. First, I'm going to show you some ways for mixing colors. Just a little review. Remember what I said, when you mix blue with yellow, it will make green. And the beauty of mixing with soft pastels is that they blend beautifully together. When you mix red with blue, you create violet. And finally, yellow with red. And finally, if you mix the primary opposite with its secondary, you will create more neutral colors. So the opposite of violet is yellow. And you will see that this starts to take on a duller, more earthy I recommend that when you're doing work in color and you're concerned about color mi mixing, keep a test sheet next to your finished work so that you can do the mixing on a separate piece of paper first. This will make it easier for you if you try and mix directly on the picture that you're working on and you make a mistake, it's going to create a lot of frustration for you. All right, we said green with its primary opposite. Green's the secondary. Red is its opposite. You will get, again, a browner tone. 
adding a bit of yellow to that. And a bit more blue. Color mixing really is about experimentation. And you may not get it the first time, but that's okay. And the final combination is violet with yellow. So here's, actually no, the final combination is orange with blue. No, we just did that. We did red with green. So the final combination is violet with yellow, yes. So here's a truer violet than the one I mixed before. And mix it with yellow. So Hazel is my model. I'm doing a quick pencil sketch of her. I really recommend that you start with pencil. Work out your composition first. Lay out your shapes. Try and remember Basquiat's style, that kind of loose, very sketchy, jaggedy line that he used. I think it will work well with this project. And that's Hazel here on the left. I'm going to add her friend. I have yet to name her friend. Not sure why. Working on a name. So the two dolls are kind of overlapping each other. I really love overlapping in my work. Here's this little face. Stripes on his clothing. It might be helpful for you to look for photographs and work from photographs, or you could find an object that evokes or reminds you, gives you a nostalgic feeling about the relationship you want to show in your painting, in your drawing. All right. Quick sketch is done, and now we want to try and create that brown color for Hazel's friend. And I'm going to show you. So I have quite a large set of pastels, and there are different shades of brown in this set that I have. I'll just give you a feel for how you can use pastels. Remember I said you can smear and blend them, which is exactly what I'm doing on the face of Hazel's friend. I think this color is a little bit too dark, however, so I want to work 
some other tones into it. And blend them right into the color I'm trying to create. Now, I'm not mixing on my test piece of paper, but I really recommend that you try doing that. Play around, experiment with color mixing before you do your finished work. That's quite wonderful red lips, so I'm going to put that in. And don't worry if, if the pastel smears a little bit too much, you can always draw over and refine your edges as you go. Right now, I'm just trying to lay down the larger shapes and areas first. Because the doll is a, an actual three-dimensional object, I'm making it darker, making him darker on the outer edges. So he's going to look a little more 3D. So I'm doing that kind of quick rough sketching first, but smoothing as I go. It will make your fingers quite dirty, but if you don't like doing that, you can always get paper towel to do your blending. pastels too for, for portraiture because they are soft they create a more fleshy feel a more soft textured image that looks more real I'm not going to do too much more on this picture. I just wanted you to get a feel for how you could create this image Oops. to remind you of a period or a memory, period in your life or a memory that's all about collaboration and relating to or working with another person or artist. So you can see how the blending, I've done a little more work off camera in order to save time. But I want you to notice the way I've done a lot of blending. And after I did the blending, I went back and did some darker lines to help define the softer shapes. And in areas that were a little bit too dark and heavy for the overall image, I added some lighter lines on top too. So that's something you can think about. Let me recap. This is a great way for you to think about collaborations or wonderful relationships that you've had in your life. Maybe you're separated from loved ones during this period of isolation. Look through photographs. Just sit and relax in a quiet corner. Try and remember some of those memories and then try and capture them on paper or canvas. Use photographs to inspire you. Find objects from your childhood perhaps to spur your imagination and then go from there. 
If you don't have soft pastels, don't worry about it. You can do this project with paint. And don't forget those basic color mixing rules. Find a color wheel online. You can find explanations in how to mix colors online as well. All right, so it's time for me to say goodbye for one more lesson. I do want to remind you that you can see all of the art in isolation lessons that I have done way back starting in March. So you can look back to find other projects that you might like. And I look forward to seeing what you've done in future and I look forward to working with you in the weeks to come in July. All right, art on everyone. Go to the hobokenlibrary.org website and you can visit all the art in isolation classes. All right, be inspired. See you next week.